Hey guys, welcome to a very, very special episode where I'm going to be bringing you guys the final episode of the Automated Conquers the World in the cinema. Why am I bringing you this episode, guys? You might be asking because I still had probably an entire invasion of Canada, entire invasion of the United States, entire invasion of Brazil, entire invasion of Austria, and entire invasion of Argentina to get to before I was done. Well, I'll tell you guys in this... This is why I'm going to have to talk a little bit seriously here, and I usually don't like to do that, but this is a serious talk, so. Um, basically, when I was playing through the game and actually started recording it, I noticed that my frames were about, um, you know, 30 frames per second when I started out. And, you you know, unless, unless you guys have actually recorded, then you really don't know what I mean. 30 frames per second is for Victoria to about half of what I usually get, okay? So this is just starting up. 30 frames per second. Then when I actually play the game, it's only about 15 frames per second, and that's when I'm zoomed all the way out. When I try to zoom in, it's like 4 frames, 2 frames per second, and I realize that the video, if I was to do this, if I was to actually do this series, the video would be, the videos, basically this series could go on for like another 50 episodes, longer than it's supposed to be, in very poor quality, because it was just so bad. It was just so bad, people, so, um... Just like in my, just like in my French campaign, I have to, I have to basically say that you know this is not going to be fun for you guys to watch. This is not going to be good for you guys to watch, and I'm basically just going to have to tank through the entire game and just show you guys little clips about what happened between now and when I decide to end the game. But that's the, but that's the good part is that your viewers, Shred James, is that I don't like to leave series unattended. If I'm going to end a series, especially one that's gone on for 30 episodes, I want to end the series. I want to make sure that everyone knows that it's a definitive end and that we know what happens. I don't want to leave any open doors to where anyone's going to be like, you know, some comment like, Oh, why isn't there some more about this? I want to know it. I know that. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I want to make sure that I end the series properly so that everyone can enjoy it to the full amount of its ability. All right? And so for the for this, we're going to start out in the year that I stopped. Well, actually, we're going to start out in the year that I stopped, and then we'll move on from there. Now, because I want to kind of keep it secret into into um, what year I actually ended on and what I actually did in sequence of what events actually happened, I'm not actually going to show you the actual loading screen, okay? Or I'm not going to show you the loading screen or my load or my save games. So, you guys, I want to leave it up to you guys. You can kind of comment in the comment section right now. Please comment in the comment section right now and say what do you believe is going to be the end or have an idea in the back of your hand like when did I end the game did I end the game in fully conquest in the world did I not end the game fully conquest in the world did I conquer the US did I not conquer the US you decide what I did and we'll see if your guess is correct okay so let's get into it I'll jump into the first save file okay guys this is the very first part of the of our jumps and it's one year later from when we started it is January 13th, 1913. As you guys can see, I'm having some rebel difficulties. And we'll get to the rebels in a second. But the main thing I get you guys are wondering is that the first step I did was as soon as I was done with my, um, you know, fabricating claims and getting all my soldiers in order, I decided to attack Canada. Now, this is where I attack Canada. I sent about 240, uh, roughly, I would say, 240k troops in total up into Canada from Alaska to invade Canada. I know it's always been the Alaskan stream to go invade Canada, so today we made that happen, people. <laughs> oh, and, you know, this is, I think this is at the start of the war, and at this time, there is no troops of the Canadians coming after me. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of actually wondering this, because I know they have a decent-sized army, I mean, the army is fully deployed about 35. Well, actually, that's a pretty bad army, but we won't talk about that. So, but I'm expecting something. I'm literally expecting some kind of attack from them. I get nothing, and as you guys can see, I'm moving my soldiers into different positions around, trying to siege up everything, and it's going, it's going fairly well, and I'm just kind of like relaxing and doing stuff. Now, while the Canadian invasion is going on, of course, I start another fabrication onto Brazil because I'm like, you know, the Brazilians, you know, I'm going to, they only have a couple of years left. I have to make sure that I conquer this part of Canada. Well, I have to conquer Canada, and I also have to be fabricating claim building or something while I'm conquering something. That way I don't have to, like, wait two years to go conquer something and, you know, make this a lot longer than it seems. So right now I'm conquering, so right now I'm fabricating claims on Brazil, and Brazil obviously doesn't see this coming. They're like, 
Oh yeah, there's the my see look, they're like, oh yeah, you're my friend, you're our friends, Columbia. We're gonna be bros forever. Uh I mean not Columbia. Well I guess it is Columbia, but all the Ottomans, you guys are off buddies, you're never gonna do anything to us. Heh 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 says with an evil grin. Um Yeah. And so basically that's basically what's happening there. But the interesting thing is, is that I'm having a lot of communist rebels. I mean, what I did people was I wanted to test out the th and the reason, you guys might be wondering why I have so many rebels, is that I decided to do this, this, to provoke the communist rebel rebellion thing, and I pressed it like 40 different times. And literally, I think I had about 3.1 million death stacks of communists rise up in my country. I mean, let's look at the com the number right now. Uh, communists, yeah, look at that. 1,116 divisions have risen up in my entire country. And to most countries, this would be death. Like, you would not be able to handle it. But because my country is so sparse and in between, actually, th about one, 3 million is actually not that big in my country. 3 million is only, like, in total population terms, not even anywhere close. Like, it's just a speck. It's just like a 3,000 rebellion if you were, like, you know, France in, like, 1880. It's nothing. So even if it does look really big... And really quite scary in China because China for some reason just tried to keep evolving. And ironically enough, I used the Shangsung Kling to the Sangsing Kling to just completely to just completely destroy everyone around me. Just everyone. Everyone just kept dying around me. I just used these guys. They were just like, okay, rebel support system on. They just built up soldiers, destroy all my rebels, and I would have such a fun time later. Cause I'd just be like, yes, those are my those are my support groups right there. And yeah. That's basically what's happening in this save file. I don't think anything else of too much interest is going to happen because, like, well, I, that's what I should say about everything. It's just because, like, I own the entire world. I mean, there's literally not going to be much that's going to happen. But I guess in terms of great powers right now, we have Belsa Belsaris, Romania, Brazil, Armenia, Austria, Australia, sorry, Canada, the U.S., and me. Yes, me. Who has a 60, who has 664 right now in prestige. Still the highest in the game, but... The USA might catch up to me. I don't know. Alright, so let's jump to our next date. Well, I will not tell you what it is, but we're jumping to it now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another year later on January 1st, 1914. So, guys, this is about a year later from where we stopped. And as you guys can see, I'm at peace right now because as we just noticed, I literally... In fact, this is kind of funny. I was pausing it just as the time when I was ending the war with Canada to just start a new save file. So just at this point, I just had annexed Canada and we got this beautiful Canadian border. Now look at this. Look at that beauty right there. That looks so pretty. And right now, as you guys can see, these are all my troops and all them spreading out position because what ended up happening is Canada actually had a decent sized force. And after I started spreading out my troops a little bit too thin, they actually struck at me. And almost pushed me back to, they pushed me back to right about here, I believe. And then I was like, uh, you know what, I'm not dealing with this. And what ended up happening was that that exact point I researched um, gas attack defense capabilities and gas attacks. And after that, I just smoked them. Like, I just boom, 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 boom. All the way up to the capital, not even beyond, destroyed them. Not even a competition. One of the greatest defeats the Canadians will ever know or will ever feel. I mean, if they, this was, <laughs> this was pretty bad. I mean, they got smoked. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't really have nothing else to say about that. But give it to the Canadians. I give them credit for trying to fight me with the Empire being, you know, as big as it is. And trying to fight me was definitely a hard tax. And for the Canadians, I give you a hand. You guys, you guys did good. You guys did good. And so as you guys can kind of see, I still have different little communist rebels around everywhere. And that's mostly because, not because I couldn't take them on, it's because of laziness. I really, if they're over on islands, which most of these are, I really don't care about islands. I, I really don't. This is, islands are like the, like one of those things, like if they revolt, I'm like, eh. <laughs> like, they could do it, but I'm like, eh. You, you guys could be you guys could be local rulers for as long as you want. I really don't care about that island. But if you're on my main continent, then I care. And as you can see, I'm just kind of like, in my Europe right now, Europe is so peaceful right now. It's all because of my empire. I mean, in 1914 right now, in our world, they'd be starting a war. It'd be, it'd be due to the assassination of the Archduke Bishop. 
and it would kill millions of lives. But in this timeline, look at this. Look how peaceful Europe is. Look at that peace. And look at that really cool, like, grayish, orangish, uh, greenish blob. It looks so pretty. So pretty. And let's see. Right now, these are the world powers at this point in the game. It seems like Peru became a world power just at this point. Kind of interesting. And at this Point and my who my fabricating claims on. I'm not fabricating claims on anyone. So, yeah, this is our 1914 start where I defeated Canada, and yeah, we're gonna go to the next start, which is I will not tell you, but I will get to that. So, see you guys in a second. Welcome everyone to the year of 1915, where we are about a year later again. It's just this is all conveniently working out to be about a year later. Like all the events are just kind of working out to be a year. But I swear this will not this will change in a little bit. But anyways, as you guys can see, we are at war with Brazil, Chile, Peru, and Australia. And so, uh, I'll st I'll get to the Brazilian War here in a second. But I want to start the Australian War because I think the Australian War is going to be much easier to explain. So. While, while I was declaring war on, like, Brazil, and while you guys didn't see I didn't fabricate any claims or I didn't declare war on Brazil immediately after I started my war with Canada, was because I wanted to make sure I started fabricating claims on someone, and who the person I started fabricating claims on, after I, of course, released a couple of nations into Canada, like, look, I, I released British Columbia, so all my British Columbian fans, I made your guys' nation. And you should be happy, too, because it was just, it was just because, like, because you guys were... Very good vassals, but you guys weren't quite good enough to be a great power. Which made me happy because then I didn't have to like... I literally did not have to do much. Wait, why am I moving my troops? I already did all this. Um, I literally didn't have to like come in and reconquest you like I'm going to have to do some of these vassals. But anyways, Austria, Australia, Australia. I have to admit this. Australia, Australia, Australia was an interesting congress because... I started out conquesting in the top part of Palamestian. And... Um, at this point in time, the Australians actually have a bigger army than me. Like, they have a huge, if we, if we look at the Australian army, well, it says they only have two brigades, but that's obviously a lie. I mean, look at this. Just this alone to tell you that this is a little bit more than two brigades. But they have, they have about two, they have about 150k of, they have 150 units on this continent. And... Basically, what happened was that I just got lucky and won a lot of good battles. Like, as you guys can, guys can see, is I haven't quite moved these guys in, but what I was going to do is I was going to move in these troops right here, destroy this army, and just basically use the massive amounts of defense I get from, like, the borders to destroy this whole entire army. And that's the thing I gotta remember about this game, and is unlike in EU4 and, like, you know, CK2 or, like, you know, Hearts of Iron 3 and 2, is that in this game, you gotta remember to just defend. Defense is the best offense. You know, the defense is the best offense. That really is the strategy to win this game. And sadly, you know, while this worked really well in my Australian campaign, I was really happy in my Australian campaign. Like, I just, I smoked all of Austria's armies, I destroyed them, and we just conquered this all in a very quick, rapid succession. My Brazilian campaign got a little bit worse than I expected it to be. And you're wondering probably why. Why the heck am I sending this many troops to go fight against the Brazilians who have less men than the actual, you know, well, not, it doesn't look like it right now, but the Brazilians actually have less men in total than the Australians. Well, this becomes a funny story because when I was originally planning this out, like I sent, I only had like two or three armies down here in the Amazons, and I'm like, you know, that's about as much as I'm going to need to, like, defeat all of Peru, Chile, and, you know, Brazil. I was, like, thinking that. I was, like, this is going to be a pretty easy conquest. And, you know, this is, you know, this is going to be pretty easy. So, you know, I sent my army to, I sent my army from Tefe to Forte, Forte do, do Principe, Principe. I, uh, spent, Portuguese names is going to, it's going to be really effective to me by now. But I'm going to, I'm going to botch a lot of these names. I'm so sorry to my Brazilian fans. Um, basically what happened here is that I sent the army from Tepe to, to, to Fort de Principal, and, you know, it was about a 40k versus about a 10k, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna easily stomp these guys, it's not even gonna be a competition, this is gonna be great. Whoa, was I wrong! Like, seriously wrong, guys, because you know what I didn't notice? Is that Forrest, 
jungle, just on its own, we're just counting jungle, we're not even counting the rest of it. Jungle, which is most of what this entire area is, gives you about a 2%, gives you like a 2 plus, wait, there it is, where's the stats, there we go. A 2 defense, 2 defense, just on, just on the force, just on the force alone gives you 2 defense. Gives you really bad supply limit, and your combat re your combat width is reduced to 25%. Not only that, but then you also have a level 3 fort right here. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. And my army got, like, squashed. I mean, I was, I was squished to the point of almost no return. And it caught me completely off guard, because after that point, my army, I tried, my other army that moved in to go attack this other, like, tiny stack died too. So what I had to do was, I was like, oh shoot, these guys are actually going to kill me. So I had to basically retreat to this really well defended area right here of the Amazons. Because I basically, because I realized, you know what, I can't really fight them right now. Because I don't know really what's happening. So I just like, decided to just box out this area. And then just start sending in more troops to try to defend myself. Because I was a, because I was like in scan mode. I was like, I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, this really scares me. Why are the, why are the Brazilians suddenly really good? Uh, of course, I figured out later what was the problem, but yeah, this is why I have a gigantic army death stacks all just sitting here, kind of not moving in, it's because I was, like, in serious fear mode. I was like, oh my goodness, why? What's happening here? And, yeah, that's, that's basically the beginning of my Brazilian campaign. I'm just like, my troops are all just hiding out here, scared out of their wits in the Amazonian jungle, and this is the beginnings of the Amazonian jungle, sorry. And just like northern, northern Ghana, or Ghana. Oh my goodness! <laughs> In hindsight, there's a lot of things I could have done, but like I to like avoid these situations. Like look at the terrain and realize that this is really well defended land. But oh man, I was not being smart at this point. So, um, yeah, across the world there isn't much else happening. So. We're going to jump to the next state, everyone, and let's see what the world powers are at this point in the world. As you guys can see, the Philippines actually moved up at this point, and that means that, that sadly means they're no longer our puppet. But that just means they're now kind of our good BFFs, and I'll probably make it a point to say that I actually never conquered the Philippines, and that's just mostly because of laziness, and because I really don't want island states. I really don't want island states. It's the Philippines, that's all you guys are. You guys live just because I do not like island states. Be happy of that. Be happy. So, time to jump to the next date, everyone. Okay, guys, we are back. And as you guys can see, it is 1960, March 24th. I did say, I, yes, I did say it would change up. I didn't say by how much I would change this up by. So, um, basically what's happening now is, is that I just recently annexed all of Australia. As you can see, the Ottoman Australia. We are officially on every single continent in the world. Wa ha ha ha. And yeah, like I said, I, you know, it was a really quick, easy victory comparatively to the Brazilian, Brazilian fight. I've been, you know, disastrous Brazilian campaign, I should say. It was a really quick, easy fight. I quickly destroyed all of Austria. You know, once I destroyed all the army over here in the desert, I just quickly, you know, moved my troops in, conquered all the major ports over here in Australia, Australia, and then you know. Yeah, that, that's basically the end of that. Um, and then let's get let's get to the more important part, which is the Brazilian campaign. And as you guys can see, now it seems like I'm doing stuff and kind of winning. Well, yeah. Basically, what I realized is after I realized the major Brazilian advantage that they've been having over me, because this is at the point where I kind of realized it. I was like, oh shoot! So just I have to make sure that I don't move any of my armies over here, and I just have to attack like over here areas because this is not this is not too much jungle and because like I don't build any forts over here so basically what I do is I sent all my army out to just hunt down all the armies as you saw previously in the other say where there was a couple good armies over here sent my armies to just go attack those armies and destroy them utterly and as you guys can see I'm now just completely sieging up everything and I believe what I'm doing is I'm not ending the war just yet because I want to also annex Chile which Chile is a little bit harder of a nation to conquer just because it, it's just really long. Not because it actually has really good, you know, siege value. It's just really long to conquer. And I could honestly end the war as you guys saw just now that conquer all Brazil. But I want a good amount of South, South America while I'm at it. Like, if we're going to be conquering, I have to get a lot of South America. So, and you guys can see that my infamy is really, really high right now. 
I'm really dealing with a I'm dealing with a couple good rebellions. Like right now, the biggest rebellion right now is the Jack the Jacobson Rebels, which I my mortal enemies are the Jacobson Rebels, guys. I hate them more than the, than the communists, the ultra liberals, the fascists, ev basically every other rebellion, nationalist, everyone else. I hate them. The Jacobson rebels are the worst. And oh yeah, this is when this is also I think when the British tried to rise up against me. Yeah, it was it was very short lived. <laughs> so with that, everyone, this is the year of 1960 and what the Ottoman Empire looks like. And we'll be skipping ahead. Mm, wait, wait, before we leave. These are the great powers at this point in the world. New Zealand rose to be a great power. Um, Hyperbad rose to also be a great power. And Armenia is actually a fourth great power, which is kind of interesting. Okay, with that, everyone, we'll be jumping to the next date. Everyone, this is 1917. The year officially when America entered World War I in our time. And officially the year where I ended the war with Brazil and conquered most of South America. Yeah, as you guys can see, I conquered most of South America. I sent all my troops all the way down to the Magellan Strait. Oh, man, it was a little bit of a tedious thing, but it, I eventually got done. And let's see, what am I doing at this point in the game? Well, I because I have a little cheat sheet right here where I wrote down important events. I think right now what I'm doing is I'm fabricating claims on Punjab. Oh, did I already get the Punjab? Let's see. Did I already... No, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, eventually I'll be fabricating claims on Punjab, and I'm just conquering. I'm also just conquering them because, well, it kind of looks really weird. That I have this gigantic like vassal area, and like Punjab is not a part of it. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go conquer Punjab. They have to be underneath my empire, at least, at the very least. So that's gonna be in the future. But at this point, there's really not much to talk about because, like. I'm not really fabricating claims, I'm not really doing that much. I think I just released a couple of vassals, like I released Newfoundland. Newfoundland, everyone, is is a good country to visit because it does not have a lot of, at this point in the game, in this timeline, it does not have a lot of population or production, which makes it a great vassal because those are the two things I need to make sure that you never become a great power. Because once you become a great power, I get mad at you and I have to go reconquer you and it becomes just a big gigantic hassle. So, yeah, that's what's happening right now. So, yeah. We're going to go in the future again. Future. 1918, everyone, where I honestly realize that there's actually not much to talk about in this save file. Because all I'm literally doing is fabricating claims onto Argentina. And I believe I just conquered. Yeah, I just conquered all of Punjab. That's basically all I'm doing. There's really not much else. Um, Yeah, I don't know why I have this save file here. But, yeah. 1918, everyone. The years of... Yeah. Not really much happening. Oh, wait, there is that. There is the Argentina and Argentine Paraguay War, which actually does become important in the future, but you guys won't find out until next save, I think. So, jumping! The year is 1919, March 13th. And there is actually some stuff happening here, which I was happy to see. And that is basically, I've invaded all of Argentina pretty dang quickly. But this becomes kind of a funny story because I actually won't get to a 100% war score here. Even though I look like I pretty much won the entire war. And you know why? It's because of these conquests right here. It's all because of the stupid Paraguayan army that I will not be able to get to 100% war score at this current time. And it's mostly because, well, my army was moving in pretty, you know, pretty you know, pretty fast, and I was doing a pretty good job well. Well, Paraguay was also fighting Argentina, and basically they seized up a couple provinces and made it so I could never get to 100% war score. So right now, as you guys can see, I'm not attacking this army right here because I'm kind of hoping that they'll just unseed all these provinces and then I'll be able to just siege them all back. That does not happen because apparently this 13k Paraguayan army is much stronger than this 16k Argentine army. And so the last little remnants of the Argentina army dies, and basically I sit at like 95% war score for like, I think, a good 7 months before the war ends. In fact, I'm looking at my notes. When did this war end exactly? This war officially ended, uh, let's see. Let's see. It ended like a couple years after this, and it, it made me so mad. Like, so very, very mad. Because also, you know, 
to get to this war point, to get to the point where I declared war on Argentina, um, Argentina was actually originally speared. I should have gone back and showed you guys this, but Argentina was actually originally speared by the U.S. So what I had to do was I had to rip these guys out of the sphere, then I had to, you know, fabricate a claim on them, then I had to declare war on them, fight the war, and basically say it's seven, seven month, 95% war score, and not be able to end the war yet. It made me so mad. I also think at this point I'm also fighting the United States for um, Panama, but for some reason, even with my massive 8.22 influence, they're keeping up with me, and it's really annoying. So, yeah. Good job to the United States for having that much influence in the Panama region, because that annoyed me to no end. And at this time, I believe... Not yet. Okay. Next save file, everyone. Wait, wait. Let's see the Great Powers, because I know somebody wants to see that. Great Powers. Oh, yeah. This is also when... Oh, yeah, this is also when almost all my island nations just started to, like, become great powers. Like, the state of Northern Borno and then the Northern New Guinea. I was like, you know, soon we're just gonna have this gigantic swath of independent, like, Indonesia. Like, just all this is gonna become Indonesia, you know, independent. I mean, and these, pl these places don't have, like, high population or really high industry or anything like that. And then becoming great powers, it's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Cool, at least they all descended from me, so good thing there. Alright, next save file. What? Alright, guys, we are back in 1920, where I did a couple things off screen, which is basically like I finished up my war with Argentina. Eventually, the Argentinians, you know, sued for peace against Paraguay. Paraguay got all this land, and then I was able to make peace with Argentina. So I did lose out of a little bit of land, but I really didn't fret because it wasn't like insanely high value land, alright? And then, like, at the same time, I also fabricated a claim on Romania, conquered them, and made them back inside my empire. So as you guys can see, this looks really, really nice over here. It's no longer all these little tiny blobs and a gigantic blob. It just looks like one gigantic blob, which makes it really nice to look at. And then at the also same time, I also went in and conquered the rest of Korea because I was like, you know what, I own basically all of Asia over here. I should own the rest of it. I don't like this little Korean state over here just hanging out and being Korea. So, I conquered them, and now I have this gigantic, like, cool, like, border with everything. It looks so awesome. I love it. And with that, I believe, what am I doing at this point in the game? Well, there's, of course, the Fifth War of American Aggression against uh, Krakow, Osia, and Bashir. A war that's really not going to go anywhere because, A, that's all in my land, and, B, the United States never sends troops, or I should say, mostly never sends troops to overseas. So, it's almost like a mute point why he's doing it. But, I believe at this point I also realized that it's about, since there is, since I already defeated all my other four major enemies, it's, I think it's time for us to, to start invading the United States, so... I started sending troops over to start getting in the United States because I remember from my Canadian Let's Play when I invaded, tried to invade the United States. I remember how difficult it was. So I'm arming, as you guys can see, I'm arming the entire border left and right to try to make sure that this becomes a big, you know, a big thing. And we're going to skip ahead to the point where I start the war. So see you guys then. All right, everyone. Welcome to May 20th, 1921. Where, as you guys can see, I'm having a slight rebel problem right now. Um, yeah. Because I sent so many troops overseas to go, like, fight America, and I guess you guys can see my massive amounts of troops I sent everywhere. Look at this. Look how much I armored my border. I mean, the United States kind of did a good armoring up, but I armored myself up to fight this. But because I armored myself up, I kind of left a lot of my troops away, and so, like, I have a little bit worst rebel problem around the entire world. I think it was, I think at some point, I don't remember when, but I had like half of Europe sieged up by communism. I was like, what? Uh, well, but luckily I have all these little tiny vassal guys helping me out, even though they all kind of die quickly. But you know what? It's just a little bit that counts. It's just a little bit that counts. So yeah, this is the eve of war between me and the United States. As you guys can see, this is how we look. And how does America hold up? We will find out in the next slide. The answer is... Uh, not very well. <laughs> oh, man. But it was a good fight. Okay. 
because when I it was a good fight. I'll give my I'll give my homegrown crew of the United States of A a good recommendation because it was a, a heck of a fight. Because when I originally tried to move in right here, I use this line looks really weird right now. But I originally had like all my troops like right here all boarded up and having really nice borders and everything. But what ended up happening is they actually broke through a couple of my lines. As you can see, they're breaking through a couple of my lines, and I had to scatterbrain to try to you know win the more important battles. Because honestly, when you're a big gigantic nation, battles are more important than the actual sieges. So I was just scatterbraining my entire troops, and sending more holes and all this kind of stuff. And as you can see, I'm kind of scatterbrained over here in the Midwest, or northern, north, this is like basically the north of the United States, uh, near, near northern Dakota and Montana, and Montana, and it just, it was a hard fight, but, um, as you guys can see, I'm completely crushing him on the east coast, I've already conquered the Washington, and I'm just crushing through the south right now. I mean, we have, this was a hard fight too, because I had a lot of areas that just had major, major battles, and it was, many songs would be told about the Americans and their fight in the New East, or the Northeast, because it was major fights. I mean, we had major, big, gigantic fights. I remember there was a fight in New York that was like 100, 100K versus like 80. It was, I mean, we were fighting, dishing it out. The United States was definitely not going out without a fight. And of course, in the Southwest, I was really proud of them because they just, they just somehow just kept overpowering me. And I just could never get quite as much of a hold on this place as I wanted to. Oh my goodness. It made me so mad because I was like, I was like, I ain't giving up my home state. You ain't getting back to New Mexico, man. I mean, you could, you could have Texas. I don't care about Texas, but I ain't giving up New Mexico. Oh my goodness. But yeah, this is, this is that just, this is just me just like crushing through everything. And I'm having such a fun time. Fun and kind of sad stoic kind of time because I'm like, it, it's weird. I don't know if you guys ever get this, but whatever home country you're from, it, isn't it kind of weird to just go in and conquer them? Like, it, it's kind of weird because these are your your people, but yet they're not your people. They're an alternate version of your people. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I just always consider it very weird, very kind of like almost sad in a way when you're like defeating your own country and seeing it just fall apart underneath your your mighty iron fist and this is what's inevitably happening to the United States right now and if you guys are actually wondering I never actually go and try to take uh, Hawaii because I don't like islands <laughs> you know the, the story of this should just honestly you guys to take away is, is if you want to beat me in the game just spawn just like be on Cuba or Haiti I will honestly never attack you because I'm just way too lazy to go in and go take over islands so anyways we're going to skip to the next point of interest. Watch out. Welcome, everyone, to the year of 1922. The year of 1922. So, guys, it's the end. As you guys can see, I defeated the rest of North America. And for my countrymen that fought very hard, long, and for their freedom, I applaud you. Because I realized when I was playing through this, um, well, I'll get to that anyways. But, yeah, America, you fought very hard. It was a good fight. I applaud my own country for that. So, anyways, though, with the end of the game, there's a couple things we can bring up, and that is the fact of, what did I think of this mod, what do I think the mod has to offer, and what do I think they can prove on? Uh, basically, my overall impressions, I guess. And that basically comes down to is that I did love this mod, it was very fun to play as the Ottoman Empire, as much as it was a little bit difficult in the beginning, but very fun to play as. I love the fact that you could just use Conquest Causes Bell Eyes against anyone, that was probably my main drive for getting this. Um, but I can kind of see why now, why they don't, the game devs never actually included that in the actual game, because I can already see how OP this is. I mean, literally, you know, I started out as the Ottoman Empire, and we were the sick men of Europe. I mean, that was my original slogan for this entire campaign, was we would not become the sick men of Europe. Well, you know, after, like, I think it was episode 10, we'd already, like, conquered all the Russian Empire, we'd already conquered Russia, we, I think we were on the way to conquering, I think we conquered Spain at that point, yeah. I mean, at that point, I couldn't really call myself the sick man of Europe because I literally owned, like, half of Europe. So, you know, it, it was very OP, but you know what? For a campaign like this, it was just too much fun, and I just could not, I just could not, like, let this opportunity pass because it was just too much fun. Um, things, but things I could definitely see they're improving on 
definitely the like true count in like the beginning because i remember my troops were just dying left and right for just random reasons and you guys can detest this you guys saw the video footage and it was just like what what is happening here why are my troops just randomly dying i mean it's not even because of my supply limit it's just because they're just dying it made absolutely no sense and then like i was kind of mad that none of the other ai actually used this you know really op cosmetic to try to make themselves bigger like belarus why did they not use it to try to like conquer other people or armenia why have they not used it against like you know georgia or oh, wait yeah the little state of georgia i know why because they're also me or you know like hyper bad against niger or you know all these other states why have they not done the same thing i have done or oman and hedges and yeah man you know maybe create the arabian peninsula have massive cores on me and then when i'm weak you know then try to like conquer all these cores something they never did that, which really kind of annoyed me. If if you're gonna put in an OP, you know, cosplay life for the player, also include it for the AI, so that and make them and also include it for the AI, but make them actually use it, so that then we can have really interesting games that like Russia owns all of China and they own like Korea, all of you know the Baltic, all the Baltics and all of you know, you know, um, I'm trying to remember what, Scandinavia. There's a name. I was trying to remember it. You know, there's all these things. You know, and then, you know, you have your empire over here in France where you own all of Europe. I don't know, and then you have a big gigantic clash and it'd be all so epic and cool and yeah! But yeah, that never happened and I just easily whooped all the nations after a certain point. So, yeah. A little bit sad in that respect, but like I said, still had fun with the entire campaign. Still ended up enjoying this entire experience. I love the, I love the fact how this all turned out. As you guys can see, that's still kind of a little, like, Unsieged bars of what the United States would have been, but as you guys can see, my army just I was crossing the Mississippi from the east. That's how good my army was at this point. I, I was I was just crushing through everything. So but in the long term wise in the long term wise it's a fun game and I'll just go down the stats and so you guys can see production. Um I have not opened up all the United States factories yet. Probably should do that. And I basically own the entire world's economy. Like, the, everything that's produced, it's produced by me. <laughs> Everyone, basically, I am the world. And the world knows it. All these little independent states know that if they try to step out of line, I will go in and squish them. The only reason why they live is because I really don't want to spend that much infamy to go conquer each, every little individual one. And, yeah, this is kind of, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is kind of where I end the Let's Play because... While I could go in and go conquer all these little tiny individual states and really make it, you know, fully under all automated control, it just is kind of tedious. And I think for what we've accomplished, we've we've accomplished what we need to do. We've conquered the entire world, defeated all the major world powers, and no one else is going to stop us. No one in the entire world. If the entire world united, even with all my vassals, entire world united, I would still be able to crush them without much help. So, yeah, we're basically done with this Let's Play. Basically, so going down the stats again. This is how I turned down technology. Strangely enough, I didn't max. I didn't maximize. Tech, I didn't like max out all my technology. But that's probably because I also didn't have much competition after a certain point. Like after a certain point, you're like, well, I'm the most powerful person in the world. I basically set the technology screen, so I don't have to be. I don't have to be like that advanced, which is why you do need competition, people, because I basically proved the point of like um, competitive, competitive economics. I basically stopped producing and really caring about economics and like technology and everything after I got so advanced I was the best in the world. Um, and let's see, going on to the next category, po politics. What was my government like? What was what was the world like? Who was the leader and who became the world power that eventually united the world under one great rule? Well, it was honestly a authoritarian authoritarian rule, <laughs> like. I didn't realize this, but I honestly have some of the t most terrible, most terrible social reforms, political reforms, and government I've ever seen. I mean, look, look at this. I give no minimum wage. I give no, no unlimited work hours. No safety regulations. No subsidies. No pensions. No healthcare. No school system. I have appointed, appointed upper house. No voting. A uh, first past the post. Um, I do a lot of public meetings, so I guess I am somewhat somewhat mindful of what people do i have no press rights they're all state press only unions are illegal political parties are only underground so even if they have meetings i they are not allowed in public 
Wow. This is the this is what the world came to be under my rule, people. You may clap or you may cry, depending on what you believe right now, but I find that insanely funny. Okay, population-wise, this is how my population looks at the end of the game. We're mostly a farming agricultural area. We do have a lot of laborers too. Craftsman makes up 7.9 of my population. Nationality-wise, um, the Turkish actually make 4. Point, we have mostly other people who control the majority of our population, but Turkish makes up 4.1% of the population, which, considering we have three, 354 million males, that makes, that's a pretty good percentage right there. Like, that's seriously a good percentage. Um, we also have, mostly religion-wise, Sunni took the bait. I'm actually kind of surprised that Sunni was the biggest religion in the world. Like, that kind of, like, took me back a little bit. Ideology-wise, if I wasn't so, like, up my ante of, of, um, Gentius, or Jatsaris, I think the Jatsaris, I would probably have been a liberal person, but considering that I don't allow political parties and I just allow reactionaries, because reactionaries only make up 8.3% of my actual people, uh, conservatives make up 28, but still, that's a very small percentage of my actual total population of people. And if I would, if I was not so good at controlling my country, I probably would have been either communists or liberals. Okay, trade really looked at diplomacy wise. These are the world powers, and as you guys can see, there's some very interesting ones like Paraguay. The state of Bono, Papua New Guinea, uh, and Armia, Philippines, Bel Belius, Belsarius, or Belarus, all these guys. They're all great powers. <laughs> Military wise, I probably could have gone even more. Like, I didn't even, at a certain point, I just stopped producing troops. Like, I seriously, after no competition, I just stopped caring. I could have deployed 2,405 troops, but I didn't even get to that point. I didn't even get past 1,000. Uh, my actual troops I could actually raise though was only about 384, but that was because most people in the world hated me. And because I didn't have many cores. I mean, these are the maximum amount of cores I had around the world. Look at all this. Look at all this land I really just don't own. Yeah, most people did not like my rule, but they knew that if they tried to speak out a line, they would be... Vet. They'd be gone the next day. Let's leave it like that. They'd be gone the next day. And, yeah... With that, I think that basically covers everything. I guess I'll go to the ending screen. Resign game, yes. I mean, I could play this to the very end of the game, but I think you guys know how this is going to turn out. This is basically the end of the game. And this is how my score turns out. This is how everything. These are like the sec the great powers, the second day powers, you know, stats. I'll let you, if you guys want to pause and see all this. Oh. Well, Bailey, you can't pause and see all this. So, yeah, this is the end of the campaign. And from the bottom of my heart, I say I really did enjoy this one. This one was fun to see. Um, I guess if whatever you guys want to see, start commenting in the comment section about what you guys want to see next. And with the start of my new series tomorrow, I hope you guys will support it too. And, you know, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the future. Bye. And thank you guys for one of the best campaigns I've ever had. Even with my solo campaigns, this is one of the funnest I've ever had. So, yeah. From bottom of my heart, this was fun. And as the Ottomans, the Sultan was proud to lead you guys into a new era. So, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the future.